Huge thank you goes out to our Karama Tool, Nicola Pro, and Drone Quote supporting this channel at the all electric tier. Click the link down below and support this channel for as little as a dollar a month. Hey YouTube, Will here from All Electric, back again with another Curvy Country Road Test. This is test number 17 running 2020.20.12. This is in my 2018 Model 3 with hardware 3.0 and FSD has been purchased for this car. Although we're not using it, we're just using regular autopilot for these Curvy Country Road tests. And here is our first aggressive curve and you can see almost immediately we're going way too sharp the autopilot's taking that curve way too sharp here's number test 16 where it did take it a little bit sharp but i did not have to disengage like i did in this current test and now let's take a look at test number 14 and you can see that it did a really good job staying in the lane so i'm not sure there why on that very first curve it's taking the curve too sharply with the most recent software updates this last two software updates let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below there's been no changes to the road as far as you know painting or lack of lines it's the same as it was so let's slow it down here we have a right curve before a really aggressive left curve coming up so we are at 30 miles an hour so let's see if the autopilot slows down before the curve so it's slowing down to 24 we're at 24 okay oh gotta take over here so the right tire went off the road just a little bit and so I should have taken control a little bit sooner, but everything's all good. So we can see here in test number 16, where we got close to the right side of the road before it said, take over immediately, almost like the car was unable to do such a sharp curve. Now here's test number 15, and you can see that I did take over pretty quickly because it's such an aggressive curve. Same with number 14. So as far as that second curve goes, we definitely have some work that needs to be done with the autopilot system. And again, I do have a theory in that the autopilot will automatically say take over immediately if the steering wheel goes past a certain degree or if the steering wheel turns too sharply. So this part of the road here, there are some pretty good sized curves, but nothing to write home about and the autopilot is doing a great job and it has never caused a disengagement. Now let's slow the video down here as we approach the third really aggressive curve in this test. And you can see the autopilot is identifying what looks like a stop sign or I'm getting a red line across. It looks like there's it's saying that there's an intersection in the road. So I do have to take over here and that's really interesting to see. Now let's look back at test number 16 because we had a perfect display. Now the blue lines did skip a little bit, meaning that the autopilot wasn't for sure certain. And here with test number 14, I did have to take over as well. So with that third curve, the test number 17 software 20.12 definitely performed worse than the test number 16 software 16.2.1. So really, really interesting to see that and uh, it falsely identifying an intersection randomly around a curve. So let me know if you guys have seen that before and down in the comment section below. So now if you guys have been watching these curvy country road tests for a while, you'll recognize this road. We're getting to a small town here where I do have to disengage because it's kind of like a you know, yield veer off intersection, but then I do re-engage the autopilot here. And now what's really interesting in these past couple software updates is when we get to this railroad track, now the railroad track is approaching up here ahead and we get a acknowledge for a stop sign. So I have to acknowledge that yes, there is no train in this situation and the car will go through. Now you can see on the center display, it's already identifying the stop sign that is coming up here straight ahead, which is really nice, especially as the driver. It's telling me that yes, the autopilot is smart enough to identify that there is a stop sign and don't worry, it's going to stop there. One of the hardest curves is coming up here, this right bend, and we've had several fails in the past. Let's see what it does. You can see I'm looking through the curve and I do have to take over. So it was gonna drift out of the lane over to the other side, which we've seen. Here's test number 16 where it starts to go and then we get a take over immediately. Test number 15 did about the same. 
where it starts to drift over across the double yellow line. So I do have to take over. Here's test number 14, where it starts on the right side of the road and then is unable to maintain that lane position and starts to drift over the yellow line. Along with test number 13, we get a takeover immediately. So I think that section of road or that curve back there is too sharp for the autopilot to take. So currently, I think the autopilot is limited on how sharp of a curve or how hard it can turn the steering wheel. And if the autopilot needs to turn the steering wheel too hard, then the car will just say, take over immediately, I can't do this, I'm not set up to do it this way. So I think that's something that the Tesla engineers have put into this autopilot software. And let me know down in the comment section if you agree with my theory. So this section of road is pretty straight. We do have a couple bends in here, but we're coming up to one of the famous curves in the Curvy Country Road Test, and that is a blind downhill curve that is coming up here, and it also happens at a T intersection. So here we go, let's slow the video down and let's see what happens here. So it starts to go over and I do end up disengaging. So here's test number 16 and you can see that the autopilot system was able to pass and I did not have to disengage, although it looks like it's going to steer right towards that dirt on the right side of the road before it ends up steering back. Let's now take a look at test number 14 where we're following a vehicle and it does a lot smoother job maintaining that center lane position rather than what we've seen in the previous test, like here also in test number 13 where it starts to veer to the right before coming back to the left and there I had to disengage. So I definitely wanna see the autopilot, at least with that curve back there, start to really maintain that center lane position through that curve, although it is challenging and definitely causing a lot of disengagement because when I, I, me as the driver, I see the car veering to the right side of the road where this huge dirt mound is, I'm definitely more likely to take over versus if the car may, is able to maintain that center lane position. So now we did have a car come out in front of us and the autopilot does a lot better when it's following a vehicle, especially on these curvy country roads and now we have a thunderstorm that decided to join us. So we have an extra challenge for the autopilot system here on the second half of the Curvy Country Road test. So we are following a vehicle which is helping us out here, but we do have that rain which is just another obstacle here in the Curvy Country Road test. A pretty aggressive left-hand turn is coming up here. So that you saw the truck in front of us take that and the autopilot is able to tackle that with no problem. Here with this right curve as well, the autopilot has definitely mastered that curve. And if you recall from the first few Curvy Country Road tests, the autopilot was not able to handle any of these curves. So let's slow it down here for this curve that is still challenging for the autopilot. And you can see that it is slowing down and it is able to maintain lane position and I do not have to take over. So let's look back at test number 16 now where the autopilot is slowing down before the curve, maintaining that center lane position and I do not have to take over. So that's two in a row for this curve here. Test number 15, it does start to get a little bit close to the edge of the road, but I don't have to take over. Test number 14, we're following a truck, so it is successful. Whereas test number 13, I do have to disengage as it's definitely heading for that side of the road over there. So now I do have a special treat. Typically I go in the reverse direction like I did with test number 16, but now I have a special treat for you guys, some roads that I've never tested before, and this is a bonus Curvy Country Road test. So like I just said, I've never tested this section of road with autopilot, so let's see what happens. So the autopilot is maintaining that speed limit of 35 miles an hour, so let's keep our eye on that to see if autopilot decides to slow down around some of these curves. So the road is pretty straight here. We have a left bend coming up. I do have it in a faster mode for you guys, and I will slow it down on any more aggressive curves. So the video here is sped up for your viewing pleasure. So we do have a left bend coming up here and the autopilot does slow down one mile per hour around that curve, but is able to maintain perfect center lane position. So really impressive there. 
as far as the autopilot system. And we do have another left bend coming up and the road widens right there. And now on the center display, you see a stop sign is coming up. And my wife was asking me, how is the autopilot when it's driving completely by itself going to process this stop sign or this T intersection? And I told her it would process it just like we as a driver would, where I stop and then I start to creep forward and then I make my left turn. So that was information that I got from Autonomy Day, which if you haven't seen that, go to Tesla's YouTube channel and click on the autonomy day. It is a rather long video, but it's definitely worth the watch. And that's where I got that information from. So here we have, the sun is not helping us out here with all the glare. So the autopilot system is definitely challenged in that. You can see the water still all over the road. We have a left curve coming up here. Let's slow it down. And we do get a disengagement there. I guess I'm keeping tight grip on the steering wheel because again, I've never tested this section of road. Here we have a left curve and it looks like it slams on the brakes there and identifies that as an intersection all of a sudden. So that is our second misidentified intersection. We had another one happen on a curve as well. So with this new software update, 20.12, we have two misidentified intersections. So it seems like Tesla is still working on trying to identify intersections accurately. So here is a straighter section of road, no curves, and the autopilot is able to maintain these center position here over these little curves very easily. Now let's slow it down here as we have this big blind hill coming up and let's see what the autopilot does. So there we go at the hill crest performed beautifully. So previous times I've tested hill crest like that, it's either slammed on its brakes or veered off in a certain direction. So they're definitely getting better at identifying hill crests and being able to predict accurately where the road is gonna go. Again, another hill crest there and it does a beautiful job. So really impressed with the autopod system. Again, never tested this section of road. So it's really, I, I'm really impressed with how well the autopilot is able to maintain that center lane position. You did see a disengagement back there. There was a stick in the road. I didn't want to run over it, so I did disengage. So I'm slowing the video down here because we have a huge aggressive right turn coming up and it does maintain that center lane position until it starts to drift over to across the double yellow line, which is a big no-no for me and I do end up disengaging. So I really wish they would write something in the software of not allowing the car to drift over the double yellow line. That's something to me, this double yellow line is such a hard rule that could be followed by this autopilot system. Now again, I am not an engineer, so this is just a theory to me, and I'm sure it's a lot harder than how I describe. So the road here is really tight. You can see all that brush on the right side of the road, but the autopilot system is able to still maintain that center lane position, although it does get slightly over to the left-hand side. And I did end up having a disengagement right there, and that's probably because of how aggressively I'm putting pressure on the steering wheel to ensure that we don't hit anything on the side of the road. So we do have a stop sign coming up here and we are gonna get some beautiful representation of how well the stop sign actually works. So here we're going through a stop sign and we come to a stop and then I simply pull down on the stock or you can press the accelerator pedal and the autopilot system carries on through this little stretch of road in this little town. Now it isn't able to identify speed bumps. I hope that's something that is coming. You can see I manually slowed down the car to go over that speed bump and then I tap on the speed limit sign on the center display to hit and go back up to the speed limit. Another stop sign there executed beautifully by the autopilot system and now this third stop sign here is at a T intersection which the autopilot system is not yet capable of handling. So it will make a stop here and then I will have to disengage and manually take over. I am taking a right here, turning onto this road. So once I engage autopilot here, it starts to go over almost behind those people for some reason. So I do end up disengaging, then re-engaging. But if you notice here, I'm at the train tracks with lights and that time 
it didn't require that I acknowledge. You can see here in test number 16 as well. So here I am in test number 16. It says that there's lights there and I use the accelerator pedal that time to acknowledge that yes, there is no train there. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below because as you saw in the beginning part of this video also, the train tracks did require an acknowledgement as far as identifying the light there. This last section of the Curvy Country Road Test is very easy for the autopilot system. It wasn't always that way. And if you wanna see previous tests, go check out the Curvy Country Road playlist. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share this video with a friend, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.